today's day's worth of videos is honestly something that I think a lot of Canucks fans are going to want to tune into for the entire show at 10 a.m. PST, 12 p.m. PST, and the 3 p.m. video because... Even though the Canucks have themselves a game leader against the Seattle Kraken, there still are many conversations plaguing this team and that I know Canucks fans all over are kind of discussing as well. This video isn't a Canucks video per se, but it's one that I think any of the bottom feeders in the NHL would be interested in because today we're going to be talking about the 2023 NHL Entry Draft. These are the guys that will be the ultimate prize for tanking, for losing, and for absolutely crapping the bed in 22-23. Just how good is this draft? I've said several times in the prior videos we've made highlighting a few of these guys that, hey, some of these players could have gone first overall over Yuri Slavkovsky last year. And heck, you could even debate that that's the case for Owen Power in 2020, and maybe even Lafreniere. Who knows? Of course, it's all relative. I'm not going to go out there and say that a guy who was 15 years old would have gone first overall over Lafreniere. It's just relative to what they're doing in their draft-eligible seasons. I think you know what I mean there, right? So today, I wanted to focus on some of the top guys in 2023, talk about how good they are, and how much of an impact these players could provide NHL clubs that select them in the 23 draft. Starting out with the first overall projected pick, Connor Bedard. Now, Bedard, we've talked about him before. He's our guy, quite literally, because apparently he is a mod of ours on the streams here on YouTube. But as we've talked about in the past, he is, in my opinion, a generational prospect. The once-in-a-generation type vibe out of Bedard. And, you know, honestly, he's a guy that once he makes the NHL next season in 2023-2024, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out there and he scores like 50 points right off the bat. He is that talented, he's that potent at scoring, playmaking, reading the play, just acknowledging what's going on on the ice, knowing where everybody is, and when it comes to a guy that's going to be challenging Connor for most electrifying, most exciting player in the league by the time he hits his prime, I think the other Connor and Mr. Bedard from West Van might have to be up on that list. But you didn't need me to tell you that. You didn't. We've been talking about Connor Bedard for years, ever since 2020. Lafreniere was getting drafted first overall, and people were all saying, hey, wait a minute, hold your horses, folks, because that Connor Bedard kid in 2023 is going to be something. And so far in the WHL for the Regina Pats, a pretty bad team, by the way, he's got 22 points in 13 games played. Do the math over the span of a full, how many games did they play in the WHL? 68 game season and you have yourselves a 115 point pace. Connor Bedard is doing things that very few have done in the past and there's a reason why this guy was the very first exceptional status player granted into the WHL. He's a guy that could have gone first overall, over Slavkovsky, over Power. You could debate even over Lafreniere in 2020. But as we move down towards the other picks, this is where things get really fun, because Matvey Mishkov is Bob McKenzie's second-ranked prospect with 8.6 goals and 6 assists in the VHL. Now, the VHL is not the KHL. It's the second-tier league in Russia. It's pretty much the AHL of Russia over there. And because Matvey Mishkov was playing in the KHL and he was getting like two minutes of time on ice per game, so not really the best situation there, but Mishkov playing as a 17, 18-year-old in the second-tier Russian league with his six goals and six games played puts him in some pretty good territory. Not only did the Olympics go out there and label Mishkov as the next Ovechkin or the next best prospect from Russia since Ovechkin, but Matvey Mishkov's goal per game pace is the sixth most amongst draft eligibles in the history of the VHL, and it's only been a few games. So this guy is finding the net, he's playing against men in Russia, he's scoring goals, and he's doing so at a pace that hasn't been seen before, ever. He is a guy that, if you take the talent profile that he has, how good he could be, how good he projects to be in his prime, this is a guy that probably would have gone first overall ahead of Yuri Slavkovsky had he been born just a few years earlier and done all the same stuff in the VHL as he's doing now, back then. Next up, you have Adam Fantilli, the third overall projected pick on TSN Bob McKenzie's list. We had made an individual video going over Fantilli and his incredible point production, because guess what? This dude is almost at three points a game. 
It's wild! He's got 15 points in 6 games in the NCAA, and he is a freshman. He is only 18 years old, and already he is the number one point producer in the nation. This hasn't been done before since Jack Eichel, since Paul Correa, and heck, Fantilli is going out there and producing more than Mr. Jack Vegas Eichel did himself. So. There is a caliber of talent here that is being attained by a guy that, I'm going to say it, he's kind of gone under the radar. Especially heading into this season, everybody was talking about Bedard and Mishkov. It's Bedard and Mishkov, but no, Adam Fantilli is right up there with them. And you talk about guys that were taken from the US NTDP or the USHL. If you had points like these in those junior leagues, you were considered pretty good. 15 points in 6 games played, that's what, a 2.5 points per game? Fantilli's doing this in the NCAA. He's playing off against guys that are 25, 24, 23 years old. He is a literal boy amongst men. And he is scoring so many freaking points that it's so difficult to try to think of a scenario other than Jack Eichel and Paul Correa where this level of NCAA talent has emerged so quickly in a freshman player. This is a guy that realistically, I mean, if he was eligible last year and he produced the same way that he is now, plus the fact that he is a legitimately talented player, he's so good at reading the game, he's so good at shooting, his playmaking is off the charts as well, Fantilli is an all-round offensive stud. And you think about what he's doing in the NCAA, you talk about guys that are producing well as draft plus one players in this league that eventually make the NHL and are pretty capable middle to top six forwards on their teams. Adam Fantilli is doing all that crap now, and he hasn't even been drafted yet. He's at two and a half points per game. He's leading the league in points at 18 years old. That's wild, man. And then you go over to the first guy that we haven't actually talked about at all. This is Leo Carlson, fifth overall on TSN and Bob McKenzie's list. We're skipping over Brandon Yeager for now because the Why I Want series of videos is going to go over a lot of these in more detail. But Leo Carlson has been phenomenal as a 17-year-old guy. He's a big dude, 6'3", 194. And you take a look at how he's being ranked by some of these outlets. Sportsnet has him at 4, Dauber has him at 4, Bob McKenzie has him at 5, Craig Button at 6, and the consolidated ranking is actually 7th because the Hockey News, for some reason, they have him at 19. But so far in the SHL, which is the top pro men's league in Sweden, Leo Carlson has 10 points in 13 games. And he's 17. He's been doing so well playing for his team over there in Oribro, and if you take a look at this tweet from Cam Robinson, Leo Carlson has 10 points in 11 SHL games. That point per game number is a little bit lower now. He's at 10 points in 13 in total. It's still early, but here are some of the top draft year point per game seasons in SHL history. Daniel Sedin had a .84. Peter Forsberg had a .74, Henrik Sedin had a .69, Fiala a .65, and Elias Lindholm had a .63. Leo Carlson, with his 10 and 13, is all the way up there at .76, so he's already better than Peter Forsberg, just being bested out by Daniel Sedin. Now, all these guys are Hall of Famers, and the top three at least, Fiala and Lindholm, you'll wait your turn a little bit to get there. But Leo Carlson is doing some stuff in the SHL that has been unheard of for decades, it's been so long since a 17-year-old guy has been this good in the Swedish Pro Men's League that this is the type of player that had he been eligible last year, you could very much debate he should have gone first overall over Slavkovsky. There was debate about Slavkovsky and his development and the production that he had in the Finnish Liga, and I mean, with Carlsen, that's not there. He's also big, he's also talented, he's also skilled, and he happens to be younger too. So when it comes to all of these guys, Bedard, Mishkov, Fantilli, and Leo Carlson, you could very much debate that each of these players should have been, or would have been, taken first overall had they been born just a year earlier. That is how good the 2023 draft really is. Now, I might look like a fool by the time this video is uploaded, maybe by the time a year or two rolls around, maybe somebody completely out of nowhere, like Braden Yeager, for example, takes over the first overall spot and he gets drafted first and he becomes a franchise Hall of Famer guy, and I'm the fool because I didn't mention him in this video. But either way, the way things are looking right now, you can't go wrong if you tank, man. If you're bottom in the league, you're getting at least one of these guys. 
So talk to the console your thoughts about the 2023 draft. Did I miss anything? Do you think there are some other conversation points that need to be highlighted when it comes to talking about these prospects? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99. And bye.